<laughs> oh my gosh, I'm dying right now. I just got back to my apartment and I, uh, where's my, ah, got some Thai food. And I was <laughs> going through campus. You feel like I go pretty slow. So I was taking my time and, you know, driving at five speed. You don't want to like have to do any sudden movements. So I ease up to the stoplight and I look over and a little bit ahead of me is a dad and he's on a bike with his little daughter. She's probably like four or five in like a little seat on the back of this bicycle. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. Light turns green. We start moving forward and they're a little bit ahead of me. So I like look over as I'm going by because I'm like, oh, I'm a sucker for like a cute dad daughter moment. And I look over and this little girl goes, <laughs> it's got a loud diesel pickup. She covers her ears. She goes, I can hear, I can uh, see her mouth the words, Daddy, it's loud. <laughs> I think it was that loud, but I guess if you're on a bicycle, it's five inch straight pipe. That'll do it. Anyways, I thought that was funny. Oh, oh, I'm not sure. Sweetie, what is your condition? How should I know? I'm retarded. Damn! Is that a German short hair pointer? Just a German short hair pointer. Yeah, uh huh? Is that a bird dog? <laughs> nice pointer. I like your dog. You hunt? You kill any pheasants? Oh yeah, that's a German short hair pointer. Why is he such a fucking redneck? What the fuck? What a redneck motherfucker. Look at us. We are parked on the side of the road. Well, not really. We're in a turn. He goes, look, it's a screwdriver. I just pulled a Mike Keeley. Jesus fucking. That long screwdriver in the road. Alright, let's go to Publix. Jesus. Fiddle diddle. Riddle diddle. And I'm still fiddling with the door. I lock it. I unlock it. I lock it. I try to unlock it. Um. I. Uh, the key stuck. Fiddle riddle diddle diddle fiddle riddle diddle diddle for three hours I'm at it and all the time my brother is not taking any notice of Michael. Fiddle riddle diddle diddle fiddle riddle diddle diddle fiddle riddle diddle Baby happy in my ride This is how white trash people plan for their future. Honey, you think three cases of beer are gonna get us through the weekend? Twelve Bud Lights deep, she's saying I'm gonna throw a pull over. I met her down at Applebee's, she was smoking mantha. Quick redneck life hack. Daddy always told me I wasn't allowed to have a pool because it would ruin the grass, but he never said anything about storage tubs. Life hack. Always work with an old man because he'll want to show you how he wants it done and then he'll end up doing the whole job himself and you still get paid the same. Isn't that right, Ricky? That's right. Bitch. Yeah, trap though, 24, shell cases on the floor. Uh, up it and let it blow, yeah, I got this under control. Chobbles with laser sights, in the dark they gon' glow. I aim and I don't- I'm a lesbian. I am actually pansexual. I am transgender. I fucked up! <laughs> yes, I really do make my own diesel fuel out of used motor oil and gasoline. And I'll tell you how I filter it, mix it, and process it. My shit is really dirty right now, it's really messy, but... Ah, you could deal with it. So I set one of the raw used mud oil totes in my shed. I let it sit between one to two weeks minimum. That's very important for any water, metal, dirt, carbon, anything like that to settle to the bottom. So take that little 12 volt DC pump I told you about in the previous video. On the pickup hose, I have a little piece of steel pipe to weigh it down. So what I do is I put it all the way to the bottom of the tote. You can feel it when it hits the bottom. Pull it up about five inches and then uh, put something heavy to hold it down like that so it doesn't drop down any further down in the tote I pump it out of my raw motor oil tote through this hose make sure you have hose clamps so it doesn't come apart that's why I have oil mess in here into this 25 gallon drum the hole in the bottom I cut into it and an old bed sheet with a red strap holding it off the bottom so it acts as a screen What happens over time as this gets filled with garbage like hair, dirt, stuff like that, uh, it starts clogging up and see how it's not draining out of the filter. I'll show you how I clean it so I don't have to change this bed sheet. 
So this shows you how much crap just the bed sheet filters out. It's like grease. Bed sheet is now clean, ready to filter some more oil. So I hook up the oil pump to the battery charger. I usually put it at 6 volts between 12 to 4 hours. So I just let her go. Between each session, the oil is going to get higher and higher and higher because the sheet gets more clogged up with dirt. So when it gets up about halfway, stop running oil, clean it out with a wet dry vac, and then start running the pump again. Six hours, four hours, two hours, one hour, until this gets clogged up again. So you can see how it's filtering through the bed sheet, out the hole I cut in the bottom of the barrel, into the tote. When the tote is full, let's sit for at least two weeks for anything that maybe got through to settle to the bottom, just like the raw motor oil tote. After I mix the stale gas I get from the junkyard, the first stage filtered used motor oil. I put the right mixture in the tote. I mix it up with a homemade mixer that I can fit down into the tote to mix the gas and oil. So I use my dipper and I time how long it takes for the fuel to drain through the paint can. So that way I can add more oil or gas to the mix to get the right mixture I want. 25 gallons of gasoline and then I fill it to the, up to 250 gallons with the first stage motor oil mixture. And that's where I mix it up. Yes, I really do make my own diesel fuel out of used motor oil and gasoline. And I'll tell you how I filter it, mix it, and process it. For starters, this will not run in any diesel engine newer than 2000. I'm not going to be responsible for any damages to your injectors or motor if you do not mix it or filter it properly. Third, I'm not going to be responsible for any legal problems in your state or county. Every state has different laws and regulations on what kind of fuels you can run. Something's up with my power inverter to run my air conditioner. When I turn the power inverter on, it kicks off like there's a short inside. At first I thought it was maybe something up with the air conditioner, but it's not, I checked. So I'm going to pull this out, pull it apart. And the people that don't know why I have an air conditioner in the back window, Stinky Pete never came with air conditioning from the factory. So this is what I did. It's cheap and easy, so let's get back to work. I did not need a power inverter this big, I just wanted to have one big enough to run power tools if I need to. Got the power wires unhooked. The one hot comes from the main battery of the truck, so it runs off the alternator. The other one is hooked up to the second battery. Why I have two batteries is because when I'm sitting and idling, I don't have enough amperage coming from the alternator. So it will run on just battery power until I start driving down the road again and will start charging it back up. Also, on a hot day like today, I could turn it on and start cooling the truck down without starting the truck. Or I could run into like a grocery store, do some shopping and jump back in without having it off either. Now we got it open. Let's see if we can find the short. Well, I figured out what's wrong. One of these uh, coils are bad. So something happened to the winding in one of these coils and it's shorting out inside and causing the whole thing to trip. So it's time for a new power inverter. Well, it's that time. I'm going to set my generator up to run the house. The cost of energy from the power company has gone up to the point where now I can run the house off my generator for less money. So I'm going to set my generator up to run on my homemade diesel fuel. But it's not that simple. I'm going to do even more. I'm going to have the power company pay me for the extra energy and I'll explain how. This uh, 10,000 watt diesel generator has more than enough power to power my entire house. But what do I do with all that extra energy being produced? So what I'm going to do is change out the meter to what's called a revenue meter. That means the power meter doesn't just go forward, it can also go backwards. So all the extra energy you can sell to the power company. The first thing I got to do is I got to get rid of the mechanical shutoff from the pole and I got to put in an automatic one. So that way, while the generator is powering the house and the extra electricity is being put back into the grid, if the grid goes down from a storm, that automatic circuit breaker will trip because it does not sense a resistance through it. So if the generator is still running, powering the house, it's not powering the grid, so I do not risk endangering any lineman that has to be out there fixing the lines or the system. So I got to get the revenue meter put in, I got to hook up the automatic circuit breaker, I got to get it inspected, 
and it will be all legit. The power company does not care if the energy is coming from solar or wind or a generator. Any electricity being put back into their grid, they will pay you at the end of the year. You do have to fill out a W-9 and pay your income tax on it, but it is all legit. I'm also going to do a few extra things with this generator as well. I'm going to take all that extra heat from the radiator and use it to heat up the hot water. That way that heat be generated by burning oil is not wasted. I also have to move this generator outside. But I will post videos and keep you updated on my progress. I did it. Stinky Pete is running on straight used motor oil. It's coming out of the tank, down through the valves and filter. It's going up into the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is about 150 degrees. It's coming out about 110, 115 degrees. And it's going to the valve up into the injection pump. And it's running perfectly. So Stinky Pete can run on any oil-based liquids now without having to mix them. Gear oil, hydraulic oil, transmission fluid, brake fluid, motor oil, nail polish remover, paint thinner, vegetable oil, fish oil, animal fat, bacon grease, stale gasoline, it does not matter. With the heat exchanger on, I can run anything through it now without having to mix it. I just screen it and put it in the tank. And thank you so much for all your support on all my channels. I have plans to make Sticky Peep run on flammable gases later on. Like propane, natural gas, acetylene, oxygen. My favorite is wood gas, so I can run this thing on any organic materials. With a gasifier, and I have a hydrogen fuel cell I'm going to build, so I can run this on small percentage of water as well. I'm going to keep tinkering around with this truck. So please feel free to follow me on all my channels. So I had to do a little redneck patch. Vice grips. Well, the vice grips held on for quite a while, but they fell off. But I was able to limp it into a O'Reilly's. Auto parts. I'm just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania right now. They have the nuts in stock, but the problem is the gasket went bad. So I have the turbo off. O'Reilly's did not have one in stock. They would not get one until tomorrow morning, but... A uh, AutoZone just down the road had one in stock. So one of the guys here are helping me out big time to drive down and go get the gasket for me. So I'm getting rid of the brass nuts I had. And to answer your question, why use brass nuts? Because I wanted these to strip before the manifold or the flange would crack or warp. But now this time, I have grade eight regular nuts I'm going to put on. Like I said before, the threads are not damaged. So I just put the new gasket on, I bolt it back together, and I'll be back on the road. Did you know gasoline has an expiration date? These post-apocalyptic seeds... Overall, you are correct, but I wanted to show you a few things. The ones I don't know, I make my own diesel fuel. It's mixed with that stale gasoline from junk cars and used motor oil. So those abandoned cars, I can use all kinds of fluids off of it to make fuel from it. So like motor oil, transmission fluid, gear oil, power steering fluid, brake fluid, any oil-based liquids. Even also like animal fat, vegetable oil, grease, nail polish remover, anything like that. So I have the whole process how I filter and mix all the fluids to make homemade diesel fuel to run in Stinky Pete here. Motor oil does not have an expiration date, so it'll be around for practically ever. And also I have Stinky Pete modified slightly with a heat exchanger so I can run straight use motor oil or any oil-based liquids without mixing it. And I can also run it in my old machines or the generator to power the house.